Hello everybody and welcome back to Rimworld Royalty for another season of Stella Safari. Today we're going to be honoring Milk's memory with a menagerie of mods that we must make use of. That's right, we've got all of the animals mods that we had in the previous season, from Megafauna to Dinosauria to Genetic Rim to Alpha Animals and their biomes, of course. We've got a dog said so that we can put some, uh, you know, wooden limbs on a thrombo when it gets shot. Uh, we've got the Mercenaries for Me mod to help us fight things. We've got Grazing Lads to help us feed things. We have quite a few. We've got Giddy Up, along with all of the uh, associated battle mounts and caravan and ride and roll, all of which are very awesome mods, by the way, especially if you plan on making an animal army, which, spoilers, we're going to be doing in this season. We also have a few quality of life ones that you guys suggested, including the filth vanishes with rain and time, and, most importantly, I think, cleaning area, which will just, with all the animals generating animal filth, we can kind of designate the zones we want to use. Um, now, we've also got the vanilla animals expanded one for a bit more of, you know, variety, really, but I, you know, I, I don't expect to be using these animals overly much. Uh, to be fair, some of them are included for our start scenario, uh, which you will see soon. We also have the setup camp, let's trade, and STRS expanded mods added onto the bottom here, all of which are going to allow us a lot more versatility in our playstyle. This, in the very late game, is going to allow us to travel around the planet with impunity and capture and kill whatever we want to. Now, there is one very important mod that I have added, which is going to be really the core sort of gameplay loop of this season, and that is tech, tech advancing here. Now, this is an un unassuming little mod, but it does something very important, which is that when you finish all of the researches for a certain, uh, you know, level of the, the, the research tree, um, Neolithic, Medieval, Industrial, uh, Spacer... Industrial something and then Spacer, <laughs> there's, there's another one in there. Um, you're able to level up to the next one, which means you lose the research penalty that follows with uh, a lot of the later techs, which is really, really cool. Because in the base game, you don't ever get past your original uh, research level, which can really slow you down as you go further on. However, the mods we're using for this playthrough are not quite as important as the scenario I've cooked up for us. I would like to introduce you to not one, not two, but seven very lost zookeepers. We'll read the flavor text when we land on planet, but suffice to say that they had quite the office party and they find themselves on this rim world. Now that brings us to the goals and rules of this scenario. We're going to have to research everything from scratch. With seven people, it's quite easy to, uh, to work your way up and we're going to need to basically research everything of a set tier before we're allowed to research anything of the next tier. Meaning that if we want to get out of the Neolithic phase, we have to research every single Neolithic technology so that our tech level goes up to Medieval, same for Medieval up to Industrial, same from Industrial up to, I think it's Spacer. And then sort of flowing from that research restriction, we're also going to only be allowed to use tools and weapons and equipment that we manufacture ourselves or trade for. And in, in addition to that, we're also not allowed to use the no, we're also not allowed to use the mending mod, meaning that if we want to sell clothing, for example, we either have to strip it off live enemies, or we're going to have to manufacture it ourselves and trek it out somewhere to trade. Uh, the same goes for guns. If enemies drop usable guns, we can collect them and smelt them down for resources or sell them, but we cannot equip them directly with our colonists. Now, in the later game, when we're making our own guns, this might get a bit confused as to where things come from, uh, but suffice to say that basically until we have the tech level unlocked to use a certain weapon, I'm not going to allow my colonists to use it. I think that's probably a better way to phrase the rule. Um, meaning that once we finally unlock, you know, you know, bolt action rifles on the tech tree, then we'll be allowed to use them because we start as a tribe, as you can see, and that means that we, you know, we start on a very Neolithic tech level. To compensate for the lack of firepower in our pawns, we're going to be using animals as weapons in this playthrough, meaning that we're going to be taming large groups of animals and weaponizing them to our effect so that we can send them out to, you know, butcher and kill. And uh, they're going to be our primary form of offense and defense in the early game especially, and then sort of a bit less so in the later game once until we get into hybrids in uh, you know, with the genetic rim mod, in which case we're just going to go wild. So that should be a lot of fun. Then we come to the goals for this playthrough. So there's sort of three goals, two of which are kind of hidden. So the, the, the sort of the, the overarching soft goal for the playthrough is to collect as many animals as possible. We don't have to keep them all alive. We just kind of have to see, interact with, tame, kill, hunt, basically as many of the animals that these mods include 
uh, as possible because there are quite literally hundreds of them and I think it'll be a lot of fun to go through as many of them as we can. We don't have to tame them all. We won't be able to tame some of them, um, but it will be a lot of fun to try and, you know, go out and hunt them and, you know, we can go on safaris to the alpha biomes and, and find new baddies to pick off and I think that'll be, I think that'll be cool to see. So uh, then the second goal is uh, based around one of our colonists, uh, who we're going to see in a few seconds, Sheev. Now, uh, this comes from a commenter named The Senate, who is a very long time viewer of the channel. Um, he and I have a bit of a running joke that Sheev is a bit of an intellectual who has nefarious plans, you know, on the, on the DL. And so his, you know, sort of his, his sneaky secret purpose here is going to be ultimately to become monarch of the empire. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. Anyway, that is that. We are going to be going ahead and generating our world. We're going to be playing on Cassandra Classic Savage with Reload Anytime involved because <laughs> I don't trust the game not to trash on me. And um, that's going to be uh, probably bumped up to Merciless once we have more of a foothold. But with seven people and no food, we're going to struggle. So let's go ahead and hit next and uh, generate up the world. And here we have our rather spiky looking room world. This is where we're going to be living. We have a tight cluster of uh, civilized uh, outlanders. We've got a civil tribe on the other side of the planet. Not really going to be able to deal with them. We've got some rough outlanders over here, a massive nation of them. Uh, they're, they're going to be tough to fight if we ever come up against them. And then we've just got this overwhelming number of uh, savage tribes people, very much outnumbering our uh, our friendly neighbors but we're going to be living down here in this unassuming little delta all the way down down southeast of the Dinlia range oh, actually I guess it's just east isn't it uh, the reason I've chosen this location is not only do we have a fork in the river which we can use for power and uh, defense but we also have access to pretty much all of the alpha biomes not right off the bat but pretty close after uh, we've got the feralus confessed jungle <sighs> PTSD. We've got the Yelatros Graveyard, we've got the Gelatinous Superorganism, we've got the Ocular Forest, we've got the Mycotic Jungle. Um, the only one that we don't have access to from right here is the Fog Islands, uh, or Foggy Crags, I think it's called. Uh, and Tundra... Ooh, there's some. There they are. Um, these things over here, the Forsaken Crags. Uh, it's sort of perpetually misty and dark, which doesn't really do much for a YouTube playthrough. Uh, the YouTube's compression algorithm tends to squish things, and dark things don't show up too well. And here, of course, are the propane lakes, which are also a bit outside of our reach. We might we might venture up there when we have the ships, but that is very much far in the future. Our starting area will, of course, be in the arid shrubland. We're going to have a large river. It is completely flat. We've got limestone and sandstone on the map, 864 meters above sea level, meaning that we're going to get pretty decent rainfall, and our grown, growing period is, is, is good. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. In fact, we get a, yeah, we get enough rain for an arid shrubland, I'd say. So we're going to be uh, going ahead and slightly reducing the size of our map. Uh, we're also going to be starting in spring for certain. And the reason I am interested in starting on a smaller map is that with as many animals as we plan to capture, this is going to get very laggy. And with all that done, we can finally begin to look at our colonists. Now, of course, I have prepared carefully for this one. It's a bit laggy, but we're going to load up the Zookeepers preset I have made. And you will see we have seven names here. Maxwell, Sheev, Doc, Pariah, Grumpy, Joel, and Cyberbeep in order. Now, Maxwell, he's a quick sleeper. He's a bit of an ascetic. All of them are relatively good with animals. He's got a bit of a, a knack for plants and shooting. Over time, he'll grow into uh, quite the quite the quite the colonist. He has also got a hell of a hangover, so he's going to have a rough start to life there. Sheev, he's got a bit of a bite in his left hand. He's a psychopath. He's psychically hypersensitive. Uh, if you get the reference, you'll know why. He's also okay with animals, but he is a great researcher, and he is pretty much going to be our uh, our dedicated research boy. He's also a mad scientist, of course. We have Doc here, who's our vet. She's, of course, going to be our medical tech. Uh, she's got good melee skills, decent plant and animal work skills, and she can shoot for... She, you know, she can shoot. Um, oh, she's also pretty and psychically deaf. Important, because we've got Pariah here, who is an undergrounder, fast walker, who is psychically sensitive. As you can see, I try to spread around the traits. Um, she's also got a hangover. I sort of let them... Um, I don't know how to say this. I sort of let the, the game generate their traits, and then I just made sure that um, 
all of them had the desired traits from the people that requested the names. For example, Pariah here wanted to be Undergrounder, the game gave me Fast Walker and Psychically Sensitive. She's also great with animals and intellectual skills. We've got Grumpy here, he's a sniper. Uh, I like to think of Grumpy here as being our, our, our sort of ranger at the zoo, you know, fending off the poachers, fending off the, the bad people coming in. We have, she's an excellent shot and very, very good at animal work. We've got Joel, another zookeeper, of course, fantastic animal worker, uh, pretty much world class, really. Um, we've got, uh, and, and, and you know, the potential to be a very good craft at some point. And then Cyberbeep, our resident adventurous weirdo, who is beautiful, trigger happy, and of course, a transhumanist. Cyberbeep will rise and dominate the world around him. Uh, he's going to be our builder, and he, he can fight a bit, but he's not exactly great at it. I, I wanted to make this zero to represent the, you know, the Kenshi character this is named after. But unfortunately, the adventurous weirdo comes with plus six melee, and I, I just couldn't not give him that title, so, you know, we're stuck with it. He's also a bit drunk. Uh, someone else is a bit drunk here. There were two people who didn't spawn with hangovers, so I gave them alcohol poisoning, basically. Uh, we've got Doc. Yeah, she's drunk too. So they're going to start off nice and happy, and they'll get the hangover the next day. Alright, enough talking. Let's get into the game. The seven of you woke up this morning in the middle of nowhere. Yesterday you were happily working at the local zoo, and now you're somewhere? All you seem to have brought with you were four animals, a few pounding headaches, and enough empty beer bottles to halfway explain how you got here. Those staff parties in the lemur exhibit were always a little too wild, after all. You'll need to find food, shelter, and a whole bunch of animals that you can put between yourselves and the rest of the madmen on this room world. None of you know anything about electricity or gunpowder, so you'll need to work your way up the tech tree if you want to get back home in time to feed the penguins. Alright, and let's go ahead and see what we have to work with here. So we spawn in with a zebra named Argus, a geisha named... <laughs> geisha? <laughs> a lion named Geisha. <laughs> I was going to say a geisha named lion. And a giraffe named Animal. And of course, a hippopotamus named Cassandra. That won't do. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to tweak these names a little bit here. Ah, that's much better. Now we've got Gloria, the hippopotamus, uh, giraffe, the giraffe, Melman, the giraffe, uh, Marty, the zebra, and Alex, the lion. That's right. And they're going to form the core of our animal core, uh, who is going to do a lot of the protecting around here. Now let's take a little survey of our surroundings. What do we have? We've got some ruins over here with plenty of materials. This massive river, unfortunately not a delta like I was hoping it would be, uh, but we can definitely use that as a sort of a defensive um, position. I, I might install the chest deep uh, impossible water mod, I might. In fact, I'll leave that up to you guys. Do you think I should install it? Um, because then we can basically turn this into a wall uh, and we won't have to defend that flank. You know, we, could, we can wall off these areas and then this is completely impossible. Um, we could use it as a chokehold maybe. I might restrict myself to that. At least that way we, we can get to the side of the map. We've got an ancient danger over here. Uh, plenty more ruins. Uh, we've got some resources. I see some components and steel. Uh, let's take a quick guess at the geyser locations. We've got Giza? Geyser? Geyser locations. Geyser. Um, there's four of them on the map at present. Uh, one there, one there, one there, and... I can never find the last one whenever I do this. Ah, over here. Uh, see, now that's, that's pretty tempting to clear this out and live right over here. We've also got some good growing space. We're really close to that river, so we that, that northern flank is defended. Um, we are, unfortunately, a bit close to this edge of the map, uh, which will make expansion a bit cramped. Um, although we are playing a small map anyway, so, you know, that was always going to be a problem. Uh, wood is a resource we are going to struggle with while we're out here, but I think we'll be able to handle it. Um, we have a berry bushes and agave fruit we can collect to feed ourselves. And we can always just plant trees. We do start as tribal, so we have the tech. Uh, it looks like we're going to be okay for the most part. Grazing will be a problem if we get too many animals. So we might, you know, early on uh, need to send some of them out on caravan and just let them stand there uh, with one of our colonists and graze. All right, but enough jibber-jabber. It is time to plan out what we're going to be doing here. And I think even just initially, we're probably going to set up over here. Um, just because of the sheer amount of rich soil we have available to us. This area is very tempting. This structure is, you know, halfway built. It's made out of stone, so it's flame resistant. There's a geyser right next to it. And uh, if I had to guess, we're probably going to migrate down south eventually. Um, if we even stay on this tile at all. But uh, for now, we I think we're absolutely going to occupy 
over here. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're, we're gonna we can use all oh, these are made out of quartz. That's nice. They sh that should have extra beauty then, right? Two and two. Okay, so <laughs> not a tremendous amount of extra beauty. We can go ahead and decommission that one. Uh, we'll go rip out these walls as well. Um, these columns cannot be moved, so we'll take them down as well. These ones provide a bit of beauty, I think. So yeah, they're fire beauty. So we'll, we'll leave those in there temporarily. Uh, I think we're going to throw down a continuous steel wall over there as well. Uh, we can probably go ahead and decommission that, put it over there. You know, kind of just, just scrap the area for resources, really. Um, these uh, stone tiles here will make some, some good flooring, because this is all cobblestone, so there's not much point pulling it up. Uh, okay, cool, that's on its way. Then we're going to want to unforbid that beer. We still have 24 of them. We brought a, we brought a few six-packs along with us. Um, we're going to want to put up some growing zones. I'll do that off camera though. And of course, we're going to want to harvest a whole bunch of stuff, uh, including this agave, which surprisingly is not ready to go. Damn, we're gonna be we're gonna be hurting for food early on. We might we might want to churn out some bows really quickly, so that we can uh, we can hunt some of those giraffes over there. Uh, in fact, actually, I'm going to get that going immediately. Uh, we'll throw down a. I guess just there. Yeah, we'll throw down a, a crafting spot right here, and we're going to queue up. I think for now, let's do. Let's try and do like four recurve bows. Uh, I don't want to use too much of my wood too early on. It's not exactly uh, large amounts of it on the map, and uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just work with what we have here. Okay, I'm going to set up grow zones, work priorities, yada yada yada, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, there we go, all set up. We have some hay set up to grow over here. However, I'm not going to allow the sowing on it just yet. We will need that very soon, but for now we'll be okay. We've got some strawberries, some corn, and a whole bunch of rice queued up. As you can see, I like to kind of <laughs> make my grow zones a little bit asymmetrical. I, I think it makes them a lot more interesting to look at visually. Um, I know people really don't like it. Um, but I'm a fan. Uh, all of them are kind of the same. Um, also, I like to match them as close as I can to the fertile soil blueprint, just because I think it looks a bit cooler. It's like they're, you know, making use of every scrap of usable land, which is exactly what's happening here. I'm also going to rip up this floor. My animals are going to be assigned to grazing, which is the zone over here. Uh, not exactly much in the way of grazing right now, but that should keep them happy for uh, just a day or two while we get all this sorted out. Obviously, the, uh, the, the the lion isn't going to be uh, quite as happy with the situation as the, the, the herbivores will be. Now, we're going to want to throw down... We have enough quartz for a stool, so I guess we'll use that. I'm going to conserve that steel. That is good weapons material. Um, what else can we tear apart here? We've got some urns we can... We can, you know, actually, uh, we can use this urn too. You know what? As much as I want the decor, 10 decor is not going to add all that much. Like, one patch of dirt and it's gone, so... I think we're going to uh, actually go ahead and, and rip that apart. Uh, I did not set up plant cutting for everybody. Everybody needs to be on at least a priority, uh, like a three for plant cutting, so they can do it if they're free. But a few of them need to be doing it ASAP. For example, Maxwell here, he is growing at present. That is very important. Get that done. Um, we do need someone chopping down some wood, though. So, Maxwell, uh, I'm going to temporarily get you off growing and get you on uh, cactus sawing here. Just to, just to make sure that we, uh, we have enough wood at least to make one bow. Because then we can get some food coming in. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Pariah, uh, what is your crafting skill? Six. Joe, Joel is an eight, so let's go ahead and get Joel to do it. Okay. Hey, not a bad start so far, I'd say. I, I think we're doing okay. Um, let's have a look at the map real quick. So, what do we have in terms of wildlife? We have some giraffes, some dromedaries. We're gonna want those uh, as pack animals. We're really gonna want those. I want the female ones specifically. Do they produce drinkable milk? Do you know? I don't know. But dromedaries are pack animals. So let's go ahead and get a female and a couple males. We don't need all five. We can't feed them just yet. Um, but we can probably uh, dedicate some of this food that we're harvesting up here to that purpose. But we're gonna be living off meat initially. That's that's definitely going to be our uh, primary source of food. Uh, at least until such time as we're able to, to you know, take in this first rice harvest here. Um, okay, we have a table, we have a chair we can use. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll claim that so we can repair it. And um, we will tear up these floors at some point. I don't think they give... 
Yeah, they don't give a negative beauty, so there's not much point tearing them up just now, because we'll actually lower the decor in this room. Um, but our best shooter, who is in fact grumpy, is going to... Oh, hold on, you're taming a dromedary? Okay, go back, go back to doing that, sorry, you're all the way over here. Uh, well, we'll get her hunting pretty much as soon as she's uh, either done failing or succeeding with this. Hey, we actually tamed one. Is that the... Fe it's the female, and she does generate milk. Excellent. Oh, man, that is that is a great start. Sheev, yes, that's two down. Okay, cool. So our uh, our caravanning will be possible. Oh, pick up those berries, would you? There we go. Oh, you're just going to eat them? Okay, good, good, man. Yeah, you, you go ahead. Get yourself some noms. Okay, where is Grumpy now? She is taking agave fruit. Ah, uh, probably for the best. You know what? These aren't ready, but I'm going to harvest them anyway. These berry bushes. Uh, just because, yeah, we just we just get that little bit extra, you know. Uh, in fact, actually, we probably should set up a stockpile zone so we're not going across the map to get some food. Uh, just over here. Ooh, we need a small spot for this. Just over here. And that's just going to be for any food that we happen to come across. Grumpy, where are you going now? You're taming a dromedary again. And you know what? We have a breeding pair. Let's call that good enough. Let's call that good enough. We need the food more than we need the camels right now. So, yeah, you go ahead, haul that in. And uh, we're going to... Are you holding that too? Okay, cool. And then we're going to equip you with that uh, that weapon and get you get you hunting. There's a coyote here. That would be... Yeah, they have advanced trainability. Uh, adequate carrying capacity. That would be a nice animal to get as a hauler and as a, as a fast fighter as well. Um, oh, we could also throw our drugs in there too, couldn't we? Yeah. Let's go ahead and get these, these beers pulled in. Uh, could you hold the beer now? No, I guess that stockpile is being utilized by other spaces. Uh, let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. And then Doc can, yeah, bring it, bring in the brewskis, man. Keep them cold, nice and, in nice 25 degree <laughs> indoor temperature. Uh, how much wood do we have? 80? We're going to need to set some of that aside for a passive cooler. Yeah, we need at least 50 on ch as change. Uh, or we're going to be in big trouble. Okay, let's just make sure nobody's sleeping outside tonight, just to avoid that debuff. Not much, but it is something. Just put them all in here. Huddle up, boys. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long few days while we get ourselves settled in. Um, yeah. So something that is interesting here is that since we're not growing this hay grass at present, we can actually expand the field slightly, and then when these agave fruit are ready to to pop, we will harvest them at 100%. Because uh, we're not going to be growing that hay for a while. Uh, in fact, actually, you know what? I'm going to dummy grow. Uh, it's what I like to call this. All of these, all of these plants here. Yeah, there we go. So no sowing. Uh, let's actually go ahead and turn off the zones. I think they're quite ugly. Yeah, isn't that prettier? Beautiful. All right. So starvation is beginning to kick in um, for certain characters. Joel here specifically. There we go. He got some chow. Disturbed everybody's sleep, but he got some chow. Uh, okay. Now, next up is building materials. We need resources for things like walls and recreation uh, we can go ahead and deconstruct those limestone walls over there we got some marble here some steel some more we, we're pretty we're pretty ruin rich on this map and these these steles here are going to be hugely helpful it's like 170 on their own um that's that's actually pretty good in fact actually you know what since people are going to be uh without tasks tomorrow let's go ahead and create a resource dump just over here and we're going to allow all raw resources, including wood. I know it'll decay very, very slowly, but it, it's, it's fine. You know, it's, it's slow enough that it doesn't bother me. Um, you know what? I think I am definitely going to get that chest deep, um, impossible chest deep water because I just noticed this, which means that I'd, it will be impossible for me to completely block off this, uh, this side of the river without building a massive wall that runs from here to there because of the building restrictions at the edge of the map. See, I can't I can't wall this off here, meaning that this will always be possible, and I might just leave it possible. Same goes for the edge there. So yeah, that means we'll be able to use this, this river as an actual defensive fortification. Because, I mean, if you think about it, like, no one's gonna actively swim through, you know, river water that's, with, you know, a flowing current. It's gonna sweep you off the map, man. You shouldn't be able to walk through that with ease. Okay, cool. Anyway, that's enough jibber-jabber, right? So let's go ahead and get our people equipped. Grumpy, uh, you're the best, so you can have this uh, decent quality bow. Uh, who's the next best shooter? Um, who's not terrible, rather? Let's rephrase that. 
Uh, Pariah here is probably best set up to hunt as a number one priority. You can get some skill up in that. Yeah, go ahead and take that bow. And I'm going to get you guys to go giraffe hunting, both of you. 2% base chance to attack. You know what? Go after the ostrich. Ostrich is a 10% chance. Okay, maybe don't go after the ostrich. Because uh, we need to feed our lion. He's going to start getting pretty hungry real soon. Was that a she? Oh, it's a she. Alex, <laughs> congratulations on your sex change. <laughs> I hope your new, your new lifestyle suits you better. Um, Grumpy, what are you doing? Going for a walk? Probably a good idea. Uh, okay, let's, let's see how this plays out. Pariah, take your shots. And, uh, oh man, we are almost out of time. In fact, we are out of time. Oh geez, I'm way over time. Whoops. Okay, uh, let's start on a butcher spot, quickly set this up, and uh, then I think we're going to have to call that good. Let's see. Yeah, did we get one? Hey, we got one. Good. Oh man, you know what else we need? We need a stockpile zone just over here for animal corpses and not rotten ones. There we go. And then we should probably set up a dumping stockpile over, oh, I don't know, uh, stick it over there. And that's going to be for rotten ones, yeah. For animal and human like. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's just make this for rotten animals. Like that. And then we'll expand this over there, and that can be for uh, for humans. Oh, of all persuasions, congratulations. Not colonists, uh, we'll bury those. But for now, that will do. Okay, cool. So the giraffes are not fighting back, which is really good news. We're probably hunting a bit too much here. In fact, actually, uh, yeah, Pariah, could I get you to hold that back, rather? Uh, because we... Uh, you know what, actually, we'll probably be able to cook it all before they, uh, before it becomes a problem. Ah, I just realized, though, we are reliant on wood for cooking, and we don't have a lot of wood, do we? No. Mmm. This is an arid desert. We could, uh, oh, let me generate the planet real quick. We could quickly head over to here, the temperate forest, to do some sort of, I guess, you know, lumberjacking, you know, a little bit of, little bit of wood cutting, and then uh, trek that wood back in. In fact, actually, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make use of that setup um, camp mod to do just that, and that'll probably be, that'll probably be the primary way we, we secure wood in the early game here. Because, or well, I suppose, That'll definitely be how we get wood in the mid-game. Um, but it might be our best fit solution right now because we're going to have to go really far anyway to uh, to get, you know, these Soguaro cactuses. And they give so little. It's probably faster just to caravan, chop, and then caravan back. So, yeah. But we'll look at all that in the, uh, the next episode. In fact, actually, uh, we can go ahead and build a stone campfire. We need blocks for that, really? Oh, we don't even have stone cutting. Oh, yeah, we're gonna get the uh, the simple research bench up and placed. I'm just trying to think: is there anything else I want to do before we cut here, so that I can uh, I can say I did enough? <laughs> um, we can use the storage mod, super useful by the way, and uh, throw down a storage bin just just over there. Sure, why not? And we can throw our beer and meat in there just to stop it cluttering up the place. Helps with the decor a bit too, I guess. And yeah, I think guys, we're gonna have to call it there. That is. Pretty much, um, that's pretty much good, I think. It's a good start to the day, good start to the playthrough. We have some resources coming in, we have some resources going out. Food is absolutely going to be a problem, but I think that if we're careful and we uh, we, we don't overhunt like we just did here, we should be okay. The, the plain leather will be nice. Anyway, that is episode one of season two of our Stella Safari. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching our seven zookeepers here and myself will, as always, see you in the next one.